All right, there's no tide today. It's been freezing cold here in South Louisiana, but I am sick of sitting in the house. So I'm gonna try and catch some fish today. Let's see. All right, I'm just south of the Chef Bridge. And as you can see, there's a train passing. Kind of loud. Now, I've never ever fished in here, but I figure since there's no tide movement anywhere, the most tide movement will be in here. Water's really nice in here. So I'm just gonna kind of beat this bank and see if I can run across some redfish and some bass. I'm throwing one of my favorite search baits, this H&H &H gold freshwater jig spinner with a quarter ounce death grip jig head and a shrimp creole matrix shad. But I'm just noticing we got a really good drop off here. So I'll probably be switching back and forth between this and some Texas rigs. All right, that's the end of the train. That's nice. We'll get quieter around here. So as I mentioned, it's been really cold in South Louisiana, and that's had a profound impact on water temperatures. Right here, it's 47 degrees, and that's in this deep channel. That's cold for us. At least the water looks good, because you don't want to fish dirty water when it's cold. I like fishing really clean water in cold temperatures. But the fact that that tide's not moving, it's going to make those fish really, really lethargic. We're fishing for bites today. We'll take any one we can get. I already know it's going to be a tough day, but it definitely beats sitting in the house another day. I can't take it. Tell you how deep this channel is. It's 21 feet right here, this close to the bank. And maybe 20 yards that way, it's 100 feet. Not a whole lot anywhere in the state of Louisiana deeper than the chef. When I left home, the wind was not blowing at all, but now it's blowing pretty hard out the south. Now this right here is Fort Macomb. I did some research on it. It was built in 1822 after the Battle of New Orleans during the War of 1812. And actually the fort was manned by Confederate troops in 1861 during the Civil War. And it was overtaken by Union troops in 1862. So it has seen some battle. It was decommissioned after the Civil War, I think like 1871, sometime around there. But it's basically abandoned. It just kind of is crumbling into the, into the chef here. And it was designed to protect New Orleans from an a sea invasion coming in from Lake Bourne. This is Lake Pontchartrain this way, and Lake Pontchartrain will take you right up to the city of New Orleans. And you can see this, this is actually a moat that was dug around the fort. It's all silted in now, but obviously it had a purpose back when they dug it, keep the fort from being invaded. If you're not from this area, during mild winter days, we have to deal with these little noceums, these marsh gnats that are just absolutely unbearable. I can't imagine being stationed at this fort on calm days in the winter time and just enduring endless gnat bites. It had to be just torture. There's all kinds of fish holding structure and cover all through here. Just a shame that water's not moving. I think we'd be picking up some fish. All right, sometimes you roll a dice and you get snake eyes. I think that's the case today. This water, even in the chef, is just not moving at all. Plus it's, as we mentioned, freezing cold. So no bites, nothing even close to a bite. I guess I'll run into the marsh and see if I can find a little bit warmer water and maybe some agreeable fish. You know in that marsh, the water's gonna be moving even less than it is here. So I won't have that working for me. And also, you know, if you're a regular viewer, how much I hate fishing when the water's not moving. It's the hardest thing in marsh fishing, period. But it beats sitting on the couch, I'll tell you that. We're gone hunting. All right, now we're in the marsh. Unfortunately, as good as the water looked in the chef, <laughs> it does not look good here. I'm gonna keep pushing deeper in, see if I can find some better water. Just gonna fish my way in, but I don't feel confident in this water. I mean, it's, it's pretty stained. There's a fish. All right. He tagged it, man. All right, there we go. We will not skunk today. On my New Year's Eve H&H &H Kakao. He took it deep too. Glad to see you, buddy. Day like today, you're grateful for every fish you catch. I'm definitely grateful for that one. And oh, by the way, I caught it on my new Akuma Hakai. I just got this reel. It's the first fish I caught on it. I gotta tell you, this thing is light as a feather. It's amazing how light this reel is. And that's very important to me just because of how much I fish. You fish a light reel with a light rod. I got this team with the Akuma EVX. You won't get worn out. It makes a big difference. You fish heavy equipment, your hands just get tired, your arms get tired. This combo is, I mean, it's paper light. We'll see how the reel holds up. I've heard really good things about them. So far, I'm a fan. There's a fish, there's a fish. 
All right, another bass. <laughs> All right. Now you can see, if you regularly watch my videos, you know how green these bass typically are. This tells you how dirty this water is. These fish are really white. That's unusual. They're not usually that white. That fish was almost in the same spot that other one was. I kind of stopped right here and made a bunch of casts, all fan casting all around here, and came back to where that first fish was, and that's where he, that's where he bit. It's probably a bunch of fish right there. It's just a matter of getting them to bite with this cold water and dirty water. Maybe I'll catch another fish today. Maybe I won't. I don't know. But just getting those two fish, it's good for the soul, especially considering what kind of weather we've had. Literally, night before last, it was 22 at my house. That's bad. We don't ever get that cold. Not often. Oh, there's a fish way out here in the middle. That could be a red. That could be, oh, nope, it's a snag. Oh, it was a foul hook bass. He came off. <laughs> That's interesting, did he follow me out? He was hooked on the belly. Did he follow me out? Was he in that middle? I mean, it's just right out here in the middle. Or was he just hunkered down there? My bait ran across him and snagged him. I don't know. Ooh. Oh, shit. Well, that's a break off. That was a good hit too, man. Man, I really, really hate break offs, particularly in a hook set, but I've reduced my leaders down to 12 pound. Still fish the 30 pound mainline braid. Now with the water as cloudy as it is today, that 12 pound leader is not necessary, but a lot of these times in these marshes, we find this super clean water and I know it makes a difference. I used to fish 20, sometimes even 30 pound fluoro leaders. Now you don't break off, but I just, feel like you don't get the bites that you do with this 12 and i'm sure you get even more bites you went down to eight day like today you definitely want every fish that bites <laughs> no doubt hate to lose them i think that was probably a red because he smoked it could have been a flounder i don't think it was a bass there's a fish Another bass, right on that point. Oh. All right, chunky marsh fish, hooked well, took it deep. Oh, I love them, love these fish. Making my day, look at this guy, he's got the orange eyes, beautiful. There's another one. Come on, don't go in the motor. All right. Not the biggest, but man, it's a sight for sore eyes. There he is, another fish right on that point. Ooh, big boy. Look, you got an opinion. On this cold day? On this cold day? How could you be fighting that hard? Welcome aboard, sailor. Those fish are all right on that point. You get one to bite and it just inspires the others. And I'm pretty much just dead stick in this bait. Walking it very slowly down this ledge. Most of the hits are just sucking it off the bottom. They're not even hitting it on the fall. Just sitting on the bottom and I feel the shock go up the line. Like that one. Like that one. Come on, dude. Oh, shoot. Broke off again. Oh, my goodness. All right, two break offs, which tells me there's something wrong with that line. So I've made a switch to a different rod. We'll see if our fish are still fired up. There's a fish. All right, they're still fired up. Let's see if we can land this one. Oh yeah, we got him. We got him. What's up, big guy? So glad to see you. The New Year's Eve looked pretty good to you, huh? Fireworks, baby.
This is one of those situations where I don't understand how people don't fish braided line. It's just the slightest tick that's coming up this line to the rod. Like that, let me know I got a fish. I don't have a good hook set on that one. I love those subtle bites. I love that. So much fun. They are inhaling it. You can tell these fish haven't eaten in a couple days. There he is. I mean, dead sticking. But if you're not dead sticking it, you're not getting bit. Oh, that's a good bass. Look at this bass. That's a gorilla. Holy cow. Look at this fish. Settle down, dude. Settle down. Settle down. Look at this fish. That's a big bass for this area. And look how deep he took it. So, so pretty. Now, he's more colorful than the others. See you around, buddy. See this stuff? We call it snot grass. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Wise anglers, though, seek it out because it always holds fish. Well, it always holds fish when it's teamed with all the right ingredients. Obviously, you can find areas that have snotgrass that have no fish. But when you're in the right area and you find that stuff, whew, it's as close to a guarantee as it gets. Now, it's a common mistake. When you get on a good bite dead sticking, you tend to speed things up because you get kind of excited. You got to constantly remind yourself to slow it back down. And what do I mean by dead sticking? Basically, you make your cast, just let that bait fall to the bottom. You just kind of fish on. You just want to kind of barely pick it up, inch it along. These fish are hidden. Good fish. These fish are hidden when it's on the bottom, when it's already on the bottom. Man, what a shockingly awesome day. Yet more evidence that you got to go to know. I would not have predicted the fish biting this well today, just given these conditions. So glad I came, and so glad you came along with me. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the Marshman Mass on channel on YouTube. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we post a new video. And until next time, if we don't see you in this beautiful marsh, we'll see you right here on Marshman Mass on.